So <clears throat> turning next to kind of a, a brief overview on imaging modalities, uh, CT head is of course our uh, workhorse in all cranial neurosurgery and ABM management is no example, it is no exception. So a CT without contrast is excellent, as you know, for looking at blood and calcium uh, and uh, you know, perhaps a couple of other hyperdense lesion, but in general, blood and calcium. So on the CT on the right, uh, on the CTs on the right, you can see hyperdense lesions. Oh, sorry about that. You can see some hyperdense lesions uh, at both the uh, upper and lower ones, obviously ruptures in, in totally different areas but it at least helps quickly demarcate whether you're le uh, dealing with a ruptured or unruptured lesion. And then on some CTs, you can actually see features of the AVM. This is a nice example without contrast. You can see you know, perhaps some assessment of a nidus and perhaps a draining vein, but you really need to add contrast to CTs to get some better delineation. So you know, obviously the, the thin cut CTs we're now utilizing in our navigation systems are extremely important. Uh, for helping with planning, but they certainly are not considered definitive for upfront treatment planning. So, um, you know, certainly I, what, what I and probably most of us utilize more often for exact anatomical location is an MRI. And, you know, these MRIs nicely demonstrate a, a parieto occipital junction uh, AVM just adjacent uh, to the midline and Fox. So this is great for anatomical location, gives you an idea of eloquent versus non-eloquent. But as you can also see, it's not really great at kind of differentiating for me where the exact nidus is, what is my feeding artery, where are my draining veins, right? The original three things that I, I mentioned were important to delineate very clearly as we're kind of planning management of these things. So the other thing that's you know become um, you know, more and more mainstay over the last uh, 15, 10, 15 years is advanced MR imaging. So some examples here on the left uh, with this uh, sizable left uh, occipital temporal AVM is diffusion tensor imaging and fiber track mapping. Uh, you know, very nice delineation of some very critical um, neural fibers uh, in relative to the AVM. Uh, we utilize this almost routinely now for surgical uh, planning of these lesions and better understanding um, a potential morbidity uh, for patients. Um, sorry, I'm sitting in one of these like timed rooms and uh, I think the light has just gone off. So give me one second and I'm just going to turn it back on, okay? All right, sorry about that. So the pitfalls of modern technology, but all right. So on the right-hand side, uh, you can see a, a, a bold MRI. It's a functional MRI, which we now routinely utilize for lesions in eloquent cortex, especially motor language and visual cortex uh, to, again, study the uh, anatomic location of the AVM relative to the eloquent cortices that we're most interested in. But you know, the gold standard really for looking at that angio architecture that we've been talking about is really getting dynamic imaging. And that of course is angiography. Um, I apologize, some of these videos are a little bit choppier than I would like, but I think you at least get the idea that <clears throat> these angiograms are showing me an AP and lateral projection, what, uh, you know, what, what I need to see in terms of angio architecture. And we'll, we'll look at some of them more closely, but clearly you can see here, uh, this is a, a ACA and MCA distributed AVM sitting just adjacent again to the Fox, posterior Fox. And uh, you can appreciate in real time, the inflow and outflow of the arteries here, as well as that superficial draining vein. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.